Okay, without further ado, let's get to the point and uh, warmly welcome our keynote speaker, Suhail Nasser, the DTM who is uh, the 85 champion of public speaking in 2008, past president and area governor and workshop speaker at TI convention 2020. Uh, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, far you go together. But as, as everybody knows, team is all, always bigger than individuals. So tonight, Suhail will share his experience with how to optimize the, the efficiency of being a team and uh, to share the to share the tips, how to bring the team together to be more productive and also share you some uh, something that sabotage the team. So let's welcome our speaker, Suhel. Thank you very much, Toastmaster of the evening. Okay, so I don't know if you are aware of, of it or if you remember it, but this, we have this Hangshan Road here. This Hangshan Road, it used to be a bar street. And at night, it was really very crowded and it was like a hustle bustle. And there were so many bars. And uh, there was this one Latin bar, the name was Zapatas. So when you are passing the Hangshan Road, you can see a very big mural on the wall of this guy Zapata with the Mexican hat and with his mustache. So this was a Latin bar and they used to have salsa parties every Sunday. I used to go there too. One such Sunday evening, I was dancing there. I danced a lot and I came back and took a seat and I noticed a girl a thin girl and she was just standing next to a pillar and she was, she was just like looking at the guys and girls who were dancing having fun she was not dancing and I never saw her dancing so I went to her and I said hey, excuse me uh, you you don't dance and and she looked at me and she says well you know all like a cute girl and I, you know no guy is asking me to dance I said okay if a guy is not asking you to dance. Why don't you go and ask a guy to dance with you? She said, can I do that? I said, of course you can do that. Let me prove that to you. I'm going and sitting at my seat. You come to me and you ask me to dance. <laughs> so I went back and I took a seat and she came and she said, can I dance with you? I said, yeah, why not? So that's how I, I knew her. That's how we got to know each other. And... Um, when we talked later on, I found that she was going through a very rough patch in her life. Her boyfriend was not coming along and her job had some problem and you know she had all sorts of problems and she was thinking that the life she is living is already a crisis, a, a life of crisis. Of course, like any responsible Toastmaster, I invited her to Shanghai Leadership Toastmasters Club. <laughs> and in only six months, the Toastmasters magic worked on her and she became more and more confident and she started to get her things together. <laughs> I don't use that word. <laughs> so she, you know, she just uh, kind of brought her life in on a steady path. She became the vice president of education. And then after six months, she was ready to become the president. And then she became the president of our, of our club. After she had one or two meetings with the team, the XCOM team, one day she called me. Uh, it was a long time ago. People used to call each other at that time. <laughs> so she called me and she said, uh, Suhail, uh, I don't think this term will be a good term because this team that I'm given is, uh, is just not working together. It's, it's a failure. And I say, hmm, there is a problem here. This team was not coming along. She was a very, still a young girl. And in her team, there were some people who were 
even older than her, there were some people who had more experience of Toastmasters. So she was having trouble. So I sat down with her and I asked her, then I sat down with her team members and I interviewed them. And I also had my own experience and I tried to analyze that what was wrong, what was going, uh, going on in the club, which was not uh, satisfactory. And today I'm going to share some of my findings with you. Then how can we have good synergy among the team members? How can we have the team working as an effective team? Okay, and I've divided my uh, experience sharing into three parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about team building. You can see those green words there on the whiteboard. The first part will be team building. The second part will be goal setting. And the third part will be the execution or operation of the team. So first thing first, team building. Now, what many people um, misunderstand is what is team building? Team building doesn't mean that you come up with a few names that this is the team that will work on anything. Maybe it's running a club, maybe it's some other project, maybe it's a political party, maybe it's a company, internal project team, whatever. So a team does not represent just these, these names don't represent the team. So there is something we should do to build the team. And there are a few principles that we need to see in order to build the team, build, to build effective team. The first thing that we should realize is that the, the people in the team are human beings. Yeah? These are not machines. And this tells us that they will have emotions. The first thing the leader should do is to take note of this thing that he is not managing robots, he's not managing machines, but he is managing or he is leading people. You can imagine, if you are a leader, you can imagine your team members, is they're all bundle of emotions, you know, yeah. different emotions, jealousy, respect, um, anger, and surprise, and you know, they, so it's all emotions. So the very first challenge that you have is to build trust among the team members. And it will start with the, the leader of the team. If we take the example of a Toastmaster clubs, XCOM, it will start from the president. And if we take the example of, for example, our district 85, so it will start from the district uh, director. So the leader will have to first and foremost, try to build the team around emotions. So first of all, the president needs to be likable. The team will not follow you if they, if they don't like you. So what can the leader do in order to make the team members trust and like him first? And then how can the team members have trust within each other? So this girl, she called me and she said, well, they, are, they don't listen to me. They should respect me. I said, I asked her, why should they respect you? And she said, because I'm the president. <laughs> she was a smart girl. Immediately after she said, because I'm the president, she said, yeah, I know what you mean. I said, yeah, there should be something that you should do because president is a title. This is the title you have, but it does not mean people will respect you or they will follow you. So first I will tell you a few don'ts, something which you don't do, especially in a volunteer team. But now I, I have seen that even in the commercial teams where this is for, for profit organization, this is equally true even there now. Number one principle, don't be bossy. People don't like to listen to you if you are bossy. So you have to actively think whether what you are saying, uh, uh, the other person is perceiving it as being bossy or not. Because many people do. I have heard it so many times. So many teams that, oh, you know, but I'm not his employee. Why does he talk to me like that? So it means people are sometimes not careful about it. You should not be bossy. Because what, what many people make a mistake is they misunderstand the extent of influence they have. 
For example, if I'm a speaker here, I'm standing here, I'm thinking that my influence is this much. But maybe in your eyes, I'm standing here, my influence is only this much, right? So if I will expect you to think of my influence and my importance this much, I will be disappointed. And you will say, ah, what does he think of himself? So you should always be mindful of this thing that the importance that you give to your opinion, the importance that you give to your stature, your uh, rank, your title, maybe it's not the same importance as in the, in the eyes of the other people. So you have to start with humility. So never be bossy. When somebody asks you a suggestion, then give them a suggestion. Don't give them an order. Okay. When somebody asks you for a suggestion, they're asking you for a suggestion, not a command, not an order. So you are not supposed to ask them later that, why didn't you do that? So my golden principle is, personally speaking, if somebody asks me for a suggestion, I give them a suggestion, I never ask them whether they acted upon it or not. Actually, I go one step further. I, I tell them already, well, this is my point of view, but of course you are in a better decision to make the decision. So because they ask for a suggestion, I only give a suggestion. If you ask me for a suggestion, I say, do it like this. And then next day I say, but you didn't do like I said, right? If they want to make a mistake, okay, let them make a mistake. They will learn. And then they will also, if you are proven right, next time they will give you more importance. So don't be bossy. Second thing that you should not do, don't be pushy. Don't push. If you are a good leader, ideally, you should never have to push. If, you are, if your team is working in a, with good synergy, and I will talk about other things, coherence, there will never be a need to push. And it doesn't work. Our uh, vice president of education, she is in Guilin. A few days ago, she, she sent me a message and she said, well, you, you are a mentor, you have three mentees. And why don't you push them to give a speech? I said, okay, if you say so, but you know, people are really busy these days. And so no, they have not, uh, you are their mentor. You, you, they will listen to you. So I, three of them, I sent them a message. One of them said, well, I'm already thinking of giving a speech. So let me, let me think about it. The two others that didn't even reply my message. <laughs> so I'm thinking that I'm a mentor. This is my influence, right? And, and they are thinking, he's my mentor. He has the influence on me. So there should be, you should not be blindsided by this. So you should know that your influence in your eyes is something else. You should never try to push. Okay. Then what you can do to be an effective leader, number one, you should be a resource. Actually, you should be giving. If you take the example of a Toastmasters club, when you are the president, you should First of all, get yourself very familiar with all the Toastmaster processes. If the membership vice president come to you and say, what am I doing? You should be able to tell what's, your, what's the task of the membership vice president. If the education vice president says, what is our goal? You should, be, you should know. So you should be the resource. Then they will think, think of you as a leader. Just because you have a title, they will not think of you as a leader. But if you can make their job easier, if you bring them clarity, they will think of you as a leader. Long time ago, I was working for Huawei and uh, we had this vice president of uh, our company, he was a Chinese guy. I remember at least two occasions, I was so stuck in something and I said, this cannot happen. I, I cannot do this, you know. I, I will go to his office. After five minutes, I will come off, come out of the office and completely lighthearted and you know, it's like, yes, it, it can be done because she, he would clarify it for me. He will tell me, no, you are paying attention to the wrong thing. This is not so important. You don't want to do it, don't do it. Do this, whatever. But he was so clear. He was a resource for me and I, used, I started to respect him. Every time I go to his office, I'm so worried. When I leave his office, I say, yeah, I can do that. It's easy. That is the definition of a true leader. So don't, be bossy, never push. 
try to understand how people are motivated, how people are motivated, why they will do something. So it will, it is a very good idea that you sit with your team members and you try to feel that why are they here? What do they want to do? Maybe someone wants to practice something for their own personal business. Maybe someone they want to improve in some area. Maybe some people, they just like to contribute. Maybe some people, they just like to be among friends. So you see what is their motivation and then you can adjust the goals and their task accordingly. <clears throat> but the good news is that these conflicts happen very early on in the team. So when, whenever there is a team, new team, in the first uh, month, maybe there will be a lot of conflicts, but later on with time, they all settle down. Everyone knows, oh, this person doesn't like to, to, to be spoken in this way, or this person uh, has more time, this person is very busy, you know? So they will just adjust their behavior. So every team after one or two months, they, they become much better. But if the leader takes the lead and in the beginning do the things which I just suggested, it will be much better even at the beginning. Let's talk about the, the second thing, which is goal setting. Do you know that 50% of the teams, according to the Harvard Business Review, HBR, 50% of the team members don't know what they are doing. Have you heard that in that, that uh, anecdote that there was this guy, he was, a, he was a mason and he was putting bricks and somebody asked him, uh, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm building a wall. Yeah. And then, you know, this guy, he uh, went a little bit further, but there was another guy and said, what are you doing? He said, yeah, you see, I'm building a hospital. People with all kinds of suffering, they will come here with diseases and then when they leave, they will be happy and healthy and I'm contributing to building a hospital or I'm building a, a school. So the team members, they should know what they are doing. And this is only possible if the goal is clear. Many Toastmasters club, one month, two months, they still don't know what is the DCP program. They are thinking about how to have a nice meeting. They're thinking about the food. They are thinking about how to recruit more members, but they are not clear about what is the DCP program. That is the goal set by the TI. Once that goal is clear, everyone is clear what they are supposed to do. Education vice president knows that it is her job to encourage more people to take this, uh, the roles and speeches so that they can develop. It. Because in the DCP, there is, there is a target that, that in six months, there should be so many people doing so many pathways. And so when this point is clear, VPE can work on this path. Okay. Uh, what the membership vice president's responsibility is. Many a times the membership vice president doesn't know what she is doing. In the DCP program, it, it is mentioned. So if the leader is a good resource, he can tell, well, this is the goal and uh, how would you achieve it? This brings me to the second point. The team will not follow you. If you are a leader, the team will not follow you, but the team will follow the most important person, right? Who is the most important person for you? Yeah. Don't think too much. Myself, yeah, <laughs> very good. Everyone is the king of their world. So they will not follow you, but they will follow the most important person. They will follow themselves. What does that mean? It means as the leader, you show them the goal. For example, we need to have 10 new members. I'm the president, I asked the MVP. In, the, in our ex core meeting, I said, we need 10 members. Um, what's your plan? How can you achieve it? And then she will say, I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. Who is, who is saying it? She is saying it. Will she follow herself? Yes, because she will follow the most important person. But if you just say, hey, education vice president, you need to make four agendas with this, 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 and this, this. She has no idea what you're talking about. But if the goal is clear, then she knows. In goal setting, there are a few things we need. I need to clarify. I'm not. I'm not here 
telling you that we should make the smart goals or you know smart goals you know achievable and measurable yeah that is good my point here, here is don't forget goal setting because sometimes there is a team but they are not setting the goal so you should be very clear about the goal and you should have clear cut goals for everyone then the team will work because now they are listening to their own self because they committed that i will do this because they understand that this is how they contribute for the uh, goal setting uh, how we will achieve it the teams can make the goal you know the teams can work on two kind of things one is the operations by our day to day meetings our education program that is called operational work or we can have a project for example we have this 800 meeting this is a project okay this is separate from our regular running of the club sometimes we have the vppr she has to organize an outing that's a project okay she can recruit two or three people she is the leader okay so we have operations and we have projects both need planning <clears throat> so once we have the goal we need two things one is strategy and one is planning both of them are different both of them are different <clears throat> do you know the difference between them strategy is how or which technique we will use this is where you become creative this is where you have the chance to improve the performance in strategy so for example we have 800 meeting coming in so we have a strategy to sell 180 tickets so what's the strategy the strategy is we want to advertise it to so many people that even 1% buy then we will reach our quota that's that's a kind of strategy then you will discuss no this is not good because we don't want to bring everyone in so the, another strategy we will ask the presidents they can come and they can bring one plus they can bring one person with them okay is another strategy this is strategy or how can we have how can we increase our membership of the club okay we can think about some strategy after that is the planning so planning is where you will write down okay first uh, in the first four meetings i'm going to give three times the announcement and two times the people will give feedback so this is planning so we should have a strategy about what we are going to achieve how we can become dcp look where we are lacking what is the strategy if the strategy is that these 10 people they are inactive we will contact these 10 people so that they start taking roles this is a strategy okay after that we have the plan okay you call two people on wednesday i call five people on thursday this is a plan okay so this uh, first we need to build a team to so build the team is very clear about what they are doing they are looking at you as a resource they are looking at each other as trusted partners then you have goal setting for them you have a strategy and you also have a plan about how to achieve it now we come to the execution part okay <clears throat> execution is when what is it called the when the when the rubber meets the the road or something <clears throat> this is where the where the operations now start here you have to now work on what you have planned ideally the ideal situation when you are doing execution you are not thinking you are not making decisions that should have already been done and also you are not planning at that time execution is more efficient when at that time you are not planning or making a decision for example <clears throat> if you have to get ready tomorrow morning you have to catch an early flight or you have to go to office very early what do you do you already take out your clothes and your shoes and you put them the next morning when you wake up oh my god only 2 minutes you don't have to decide now because decision making will takes a lot of time and energy thinking will make a lot of energy so if if the thinking and decision making is already done here execution is smooth and effortless okay so good strategy good planning and then execution so what i like to do for execution is create systems 
create systems. Every time you do something, no matter it's for your work, no matter it's for your uh, travels, no matter it's for any other thing, every time you want to do something and you know that you will have to do it at least one time more, you create a system so that next time you do it with less effort. For example, let me give you a personal example. I, um, uh, every morning, I'm a, I'm a person who's very lazy in the morning. I, I don't like to wake up early and go to office. So sometimes I have to go to office at, uh, according to the, my customer time. It starts at 10 or 11, I'm very happy. But sometimes the customer <laughs> is in another country in the New Zealand, Australia, I have to go very early. So I have created a system for my breakfast. In my breakfast, I eat uh, a fried egg, uh, a bread which is toasted and uh, some almonds and uh, a, a glass of milk, hot glass of milk. Do you know that it, I give myself five minutes to, to pre pre prepare this breakfast. And I just work like a robot. I just go there, open the fridge, one, two, three, four, go there and put it here, put it here, put it here, tang, 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 tang. and in five minutes, everything is ready. Because at that time, I'm not, where is the egg? Oh, where is the, because everything is done. Execution strategy, everything is done. Uh, planning and uh, strategy is done. Now I only need to execute. I'm so fast, so efficient. Five minutes. I'm sure even a chef cannot do that. <laughs> uh, you can do it for everything. I, was, I had this colleague even two days ago. I came out of my DD. You know, I, uh, I, I take this like uh, Uber if there is a foreigner uh, somewhere. So I went, I, I came out of my car and I closed the door and he come to me and say, what did you do just now? What did you do? I said, what? I said, you have a bag and you were coming out of your car and then you closed the door. I, I didn't get it, but it was so smooth. And I said, oh yeah, because I created a system. So what's the system? I say, you see, I have a bag, backpack. When I'm near where the car will stop, first I, I put one hand, then I open the door. When I come out, I put the second hand and the second hand coming back will close the door. It happens in one second and it's so smooth. Why? Because I have analyzed my process and I say, okay, this process can be improved like this. So every time, whatever you do, so you are preparing for a meeting, even you're going, going to meet a new girl. Okay, first, the first thing I need to know Know this about the girl. Second thing, this is the second stage. This is the third stage. This is the first stage. <laughs> so, like someone long time ago, someone asked me, "Hey, so uh, why are you so successful or failure?" Blah blah blah. And say, "Yeah, because uh, she or she is not in my system yet." <laughs> what does that mean? I have a system. Let her fall into my system, then I will tell you <laughs> whether I will be successful or not. So you create system and processes, and. Uh, then your execution will always be good. So once the team start working coherently, the goal is clear, strategy is clear, planning is done, and you are doing execution, and now something unexpectedly happened, what will you do? Now you need to take a quick decision. Do you know what is the word for this? This is called tactics. If, if you, strategy is the very wide brush that you paint, this is what we are doing. Planning, okay, this first week, this second week, this third week, this. The third week, you are already executing, something happened. Now you need to make a local small decision. This is called tactics. This is where also the leadership needs to think ahead and need to have backups, okay? <clears throat> so try to understand how the team uh, is built around trust, how, to, how it is important to have the, the goals so that everybody's goal is clear how strategy, planning, tactics work. And then you will have a very nice teamwork and we will have an even better Shanghai Leadership Toastmasters Club. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sihel. Oh. Yeah, how many, one, two minutes? Two minutes yeah. for questions. So anyone have uh, questions? For me personally, actually yeah. I learned a lot. If I interpret all those um, tips, 
I would say for the first one is how you handle the human emotions mm. and un understand what was their needs to put them together. The second one for the goal setting is more about how you set up a clear goal and a achievable. So you could uh, um, give your team uh, some tips to work together. The third one is about the execution, which means you give a big picture as well as you give some uh, more detailed like tips, how you execute, how you like put it on the ground. Yeah. So those are all my understanding. Anyone have uh, questions? Yes, Helen. Please. Uh, recently, there is a new intern uh, into my team, and actually, she uh, is very shy. and And I think she follow every my instruction. But I, I think uh, she is no working efficiency. Uh, I have talked uh, with her sometimes. I think she understand, but she can't um, execute in the daily, you know, daily business. So I, my mm -hmm. question is, how can I communicate with her, or how can I inspire her? Because I think she, the problem is she is uh, very, very young, is still in the university. I think she tried her best, but she didn't meet my expectation. Thanks. Okay, when we uh, when we talk about motivation. So we say people can be motivated by this, people can be motivated by that, but we sometimes uh, ignore a very important thing for motivation. Do you know that training, training can motivate employees and staff and team. So sometimes the person is not motivated because they don't know how to do their job. So if you give them proper training guidance, and they say, yeah, I can do that. And then they will be automatically motivated. So in order to make her more motivated you need to find out why she, where is the difficulty maybe she doesn't know how to put a formula in excel sheet you tell her that ask her to do it 10 times okay she and now she knows how to do it so she will do it maybe she is reluctant to go and talk to the senior manager take her with you to the senior manager tell senior manager that please talk to her a little bit nicely because she is so scared of you okay so give teach her uh, or train her to go to big officers if, if she is avoiding that, okay? So see where is the problem and give her proper training, it will motivate her. But I would also say that not everyone is, uh, has the same capacity for work. That's why in the world you see some people become CEO, some people become uh, just managers and some people just, uh, you know, general manager. People at, perform at different capacity. So if you do your job well, there is no guarantee that the person will also be super efficient on everything. So from my point of view, if you have done your job correctly, if you have done your job, tick, 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 then I will not hold you responsible for what she is doing. Yeah, but if I can see that, oh, but you didn't train her or you didn't encourage her or you, that is on your part. What's from their side, you are not responsible for that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Sudhal. Thank you.